Yellowstone volcano, 1,000 mile warning has been given after puzzling find. This is issued by the USGS scientists explaining. Callum Hoare reports on Express UK today's article. Yellowstone volcano scientists sent a warning to the states in surrounding areas up to a thousand miles from Yellowstone supervolcano. This is after he found something that was a real puzzle and it was revealed during his lecture. Yellowstone caldera is a supervolcano. As we know, it's one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes in the world. There's a total of about 20, but new ones are being found all the time. It's located below Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, Western United States, sitting between Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It's constantly monitored by the USGS, US Geological Survey, and due to its capability to inflict, inflict disaster on a global scale if a super eruption occurs. The last event of this kind has not happened for more than 630,000 years. That was a super eruption. And they also had a serious eruption 70,000 years ago and another 80 eruptions since then. Basically, about every 6,000 years, we're basically 10,000 years overdue, uh, which reportedly makes another super eruption uh, again overdue. Larry Mastin, a USGS hydrologist working with fellow colleague Jacob Lowenstern in 2016 to produce a paper on the ash fall impacts in the event of another super eruption. Speaking during the lecture in the same year, Dr. Mastin revealed how the USGS scientists have three previous Yellowstone eruptions on record that they can use to predict future incidents. They're talking about, of course, the super eruptions. He said there have been three major events identified at Yellowstone in the last two million years. The largest was Huckleberry Ridge 2.1 million years ago. And uh, it expelled a volume of about 2,500 cubic meters of magma. And he showed a map, the uh, Lava Creek ash bed, Huckleberry ridge ash bed and other uh, he even has a comparison with mount st helens how tiny that looked compared to uh, what yellowstone had done in the past he said the mesa falls 1.3 million years ago and the lava creek the second of the two lava creek eruptions about 600,000 years ago he said these were volumes estimated just from these deposits and not included in the Tephra Fall deposits that may have been transported over 620 miles, 1,000 kilometer distance. The duration of the eruptions is not really well constrained, but the experts are inclined to think that they were on maybe days, very rapid days, maybe weeks is the longest. Mastin went on to reveal how findings from the Huckleberry Ridge eruption prove Yellowstone has the power to send ash deposits across the U.S. and as far as California, roughly a thousand miles away. He also explained how wind patterns seem to have little impact, making predicting future events even harder. And he explained these eruptions did produce Tephra Falls, in other words, deposits were produced by Tephra and rose buoyantly, drifting downwind during these eruptions. We know that from the scattered deposits around the United States, he says, but in fact, in a more recent map of these deposits, we have been able to find them as far west as California and Oregon, and even offshore, to the west, of course, he means. That is unbelievable. You can imagine the devastation. And he adds, so this adds a real puzzle to this because it is significantly upwind from Yellowstone. And he says, even if you look at the wind patterns that may have existed in the last few million years, it seems unlikely that the wind pattern would have changed dramatically to send ash deposits that far to the west. Dr. Mastin also discussed during the same lecture the impacts on the duration of an eruption, 
should Yellowstone go off again? Well, we saw that the eruption in Kilauea lasted from what? From May to the end of August. That was four months. Uh, now, he said we don't know how the duration of the eruption, how long that will last if Yellowstone goes off. He's talking about a super eruption. Uh, something caught my eye, and I want to do a video on that having to do with the basalt eruption, how dangerous they are, and uh, that can, they can be taking not months but years, and that's just astonishing. And uh, that's could, well, that, anyway, that's for another upcoming video. I have to do some research on that. But that's very important for us to know. He added, uh, over a three-day period, the umbrella cl cloud would cover most of the North American continent, obviously. When it gradually disperses with wind patterns, so you can look at the tephra deposits in these four different three-day simulations, one in January, one in April, one in July, and one in October, the pale yellow is 1 to 3 millimeters, the 3 to 10, 10 to 30, 30 to 100, 100 to 300 millimeters. And in the dark regions are over a meter of ash. That's over 3 feet of ash. I mean, you can imagine how much that would, uh, on a roof of a house, that would, of course, devastate the roof. And you could do uh, 3 feet of, you know, how can you walk on the streets or even drive on the streets? That would be... Uh, totally impossible, let alone breathing the air. Uh, it's, it's an extinction level event, as you can imagine. Um, if you go to a one week duration, he says, the pattern looks pretty similar, and for one month it's fairly the same. But as you go to one month, we're decreasing the average eruption rate, which is weakening the growth of the umbrella cloud, the ash cloud. This is an image of the Yellowstone tephra that we find at uh, Mesa, the Mesa Falls tephra, sourced from Yellowstone Caldera, USA. The mantling pre-existing topography. The inset is gradational, coarse, fine, internal structure of fall deposits. It's a photograph by Brent Alloway. You can see how huge this thing is. And it also seems to have been in various uh, different eruptions. We had one of the past USGS announcements that said that one of the latest eruptions, super eruptions were actually uh, 170. It was counted as one eruption, but it had a, an interval of 170 years, it, although it was considered the same eruption. It had a pause, and then it started again. And it seems that the direction of the tephra could have had, uh, seems to have a different direction of the tephra fall because of that, of the wind patterns perhaps. But uh, you can see how huge this eruption must have been. The inset here shows coarseness. Um, the tephra derives from the Greek word meaning ashes. It's collective term for the explosivity erupted loose fragmental pyroclastic products. These are the P-flows from the volcanic eruption, you can imagine. And it encompasses all grain sizes. The tephra deposits have two special features. They are erupted uh, over geographically short periods of time, typically only hours or days or perhaps weeks or months and they can be spread widely over land and the sea to form a thin blanket that has the same age wherever it occurs. So once identified as it's by its mineralogical and geochemical properties, a tephra layer, unless reworked, provides a time parallel marker bed or isochrome. Tephrochronology is the use of tephra deposits as isochromes to correlate sequences in different places by providing precise chronostratigraphic tie points and to transfer relative or numeric ages to such sequences where the tephras have been dated by radiometric, incremental, or age-equivalent methods. Tephras are now routinely detected and dated in terrestrial, marine, and ice core records throughout the world in both microscopic and uh, macroscopic 
forms, the crypto TEFRA forms, and consequently, uh, consequently are used in a diverse range of disciplinary fields, including stratigraphy, geomorphology, glaciology, sedimentology, archaeology, hominid evolution, paleoenvironmental reconstruction, including paleoecology, paleo paleoclimatology. So tephrochronology is also central to establishing the frequency and periodicity of major episodes of volcanic activity and the assessment of, of course, volcanic hazards. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.